Hello and welcome to our Demystifying 5G video series. Today we will take a look at the clock and LO architecture in a 5G base station and particularly there on the subject about what is happening if a clock is suddenly disappearing. The clock certainly drives the sampling clock generator, it drives the local oscillator and of course it needs to be there. I would like to introduce Steve Gutierrez from IDT. He has brought a device with him that is exactly addressing the subject. And I also would like to introduce Greg Bonnerguide, application engineer, Rodin Schwartz. Steve, coming back to this question, what is happening if this central clock that goes into the base station is suddenly missing? Well, Martin, that's actually a really important consideration. The 8V19N880 has an input clock monitor. If it detects that the input clock is missing, it immediately puts the device into holdover, meaning that it fixes the output at a fixed frequency. Now, should that clock become active again, it will relock to it. And of course, there's a small settling time where it's acquiring that lock input, or lock to that input. Now, one easy way to measure this is to actually uh, enable and disable the input clock. So period periodically turn that clock on and off and observe the output and see how the device is responding. Now, Greg, how do we measure that? Well, Steve, let me show you. I brought an SMW and an FSWP here in this stack, and I think it shows off these capabilities quite well. We start with the SMW, which is actually a vector signal generator, but it works out really well for doing measurements with clock generators because it's got a new option called the KA10 that allows you to actually customize your phase noise profile as needed to represent different oscillators or different synthesizers that you might want to drive your clock circuitry with. And then we're also, in this particular case, using the built-in pulse modulator, pulse generator capabilities. So for the hold, hold off testing that we're doing right now, we dial in a pulse period of one second and we have a pulse width of half a second. Now we come down to the FSWP. Now the FSWP, as you know, is a very good high-end phase noise analyzer but it also provides an option for a high-end spectrum analyzer, the B1 option. And so we're using some of the functionality in the B1 to do this particular demodulation. In particular, we're using the analog demodulation function, the K7. And in this case, we are looking at the profile of your clock circuitry versus time and just seeing what's happening during the lock and unlock cycles. And I've zoomed in on a section of it here. And I placed a couple markers and we can see that the difference between these markers is sixty nine point seven milliseconds. How does that measurement sound? That's actually a really good measurement. Thank you, Greg. Well, the capture that Greg shows us had three different regions. There was a flat region, there was a sloped region, and a curved region. The flat region is when a clock generator is locked to the input clock. When that clock is removed, it introduces a small frequency offset when the device goes into holdover. This is a sloped region. When the clock returns, the device detects it and it goes into relock. That's the curved region that we observed. So Greg, he zoomed in to the relock region, which showed the transition between the sloped into the curved region and finally into the flat region. And that number that he measure, measured was really good. Now, if the requirement is for a faster lock time, the AV19N80, it has a programmable bandwidth. That bandwidth can be expanded and it will allow the clock to lock even faster. Martin, does that answer your question? 
Thanks, Steve. This answers the question actually very well. Um, I would like to thank you for being part of this video. I would like to thank you to bring the device. And I also would like to thank Greg for helping us with the measurements. Thanks a lot for watching this video and see you next time soon. Bye-bye.